Uh, Johnny, could you tell me about Car and Classic while being attacked by ducks? Car and Classic is Europe's biggest classic sales site with over 35,000 cars and bikes for sale at any time. And now they do online auctions where you can get professional photos, a detailed write-up, a secure payment service and the chance to get your classic in front of 4 million monthly visitors. And all of Car and Classic seller fees are only payable when your car actually sells. Excellent. Thanks. Smith & Sniff is sponsored by Car & Classic. I'm Johnny Smith. I'm Richard Porter. And this is Smith & Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and many other things live. <laughs> oh. Oh. We're back. We're back. We're at Lotus. Love you guys. A lovely light evening of, I was going to say entertainment, but I think that would be pushing it. But anyway, anyway it depends we're, we're how here much again. chat about your centre console uh, and we're, snack we're, we're choices of the journey. <laughs> <laughs> you boring, trouble salesman, you. It's okay, because uh, we are going to answer some audience questions. Yeah, questions of the people. Now, we've been doing this at previous live shows, and um, we had a lovely MG tote bag into which the question forms were put but then at the end of the last live show Johnny gave it away to a man who said can I have your MG tote bag please he held so. a blade to my throat <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he said it's either your RFID wallet or it's the tote bag I'm going to take one of them and I said listen don't take my wallet so we have so a much very clerical work involved but we have a very handsome and extremely light extremely light <laughs> lotus but, bag but lovely handling Lotus. Oh, isn't it? It's just it's a beautiful just, handling bag. It's amazing when you just you just flick it from left to right. Like just, it is. It's the direction changing. It's it's just, so you just feel it, and then but it rides well as well. Yeah, that is a nice you know, bag. I actually so, think when you slot it, slot it onto my wrist like this. What do they do at that Smith and Sniff live show? Well, they mainly just fucked around with a carrier no, bag. I, <laughs> It actually feels lighter now that you've put it on me. <laughs> Take thing. it off. It's heavier now. It just slips around you because it's... It's heavier now. You see? Anyway. Um, it's quite a full bag there. I'm going to pluck a question out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a flyer. Uh, Nico Rossella. Strange person. Which of you has the smallest hands? <laughs> what? What? Are you or I? I assume so. Not the whole audience. Hang on. Hang on. I do. Just, just though. Yeah, just. Similar. Yeah. So it's me. That oh. was a barrel of laughs. It's reassuringly weird, but... Is that you? Did you... What? So I've got the slightly smaller hands than him. What? Are you... Do you need one of us to we're about the same. We're about the, this... we're about the same height, and I think yeah. we've got a similar shoe size, haven't I'm we? I'm size 10. Okay, I'm 12. I win. You have size 12 feet? Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, and we're both left-hand drive. It's true. It's not that interesting. Smith next question. Sniff, Britain's most smudgy handwriting podcast. That's true. Uh, next question is anonymous, but it's, <laughs> and you may want to plead the fifth on this. <laughs> How much have you spent on the Allegro so far, Johnny? Oh, fucking loads. <laughs> <laughs> More than Jim Radcliffe would. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hang on. Phone's vibrating. Has <laughs> he bought your electric? Listen, Jim. Here's the situation. No, I don't think Jim Ratcliffe would. Uh, if I don't sell Jim the Allegro, you know what Jim's going to do? He's going to go, fuck you. I'm going to buy all the other Allegros. All Allegros. And, and they're all going to be better than yours. Yours will be the worst Allegro in the country. I am going to buy British Leyland. Um, he probably could, because I don't know who owns the trade name. I bet you know. Uh... Oh, there's a company in Turkey that still has Leyland, uh, or part of it, I think, Ashok Leyland. Yes, uh, they still make Indian coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, really mad evening tonight, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick Bellenberg says, one for Richard. With his recent remarks on Meghan Markle and today's press complaint escalation, has Jeremy Clarkson blown his career, or does this just add to the legend slash infamy? Um, I don't think he's blown his career because they're in a weird situation where the rumour got out and this was never official that, that said Amazon were cancelling him but they're not they're just not renewing his contract it's the same way that he left the BBC he wasn't sacked 
he just did something stupid around the time it was contract negotiation time, so they just won't, won't give you a new contract. Well, I'll make sure that I put a note in my calendar every time his contract's about... What, to go and antagonise him in some way? <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll make sure one of his bedroom windows is open, I'll throw a wasp's nest into it, or something like that, and just see what happens in the middle of the night. It wouldn't do it during the day. So, no, I don't um, think Jeremy's career's over, but I think he needs to just stop being a silly twat about Meghan Markle, because it's weird. Um, it, uh, but apart from that, you know, he's, he's, I don't think he's... Um, He's completely over. It's just that, you know, people who thought he was being cancelled by Amazon were very cross. And people who wanted him to be cancelled by Amazon will be very cross because he's not. And he's going to be on Grand Tour for, what, a couple of years still? There'll be shows going Is out, it a couple of years? couple of years. Well, there'll be uh, there'll probably things I'm not allowed to say. And then The Farm has another series to go, so that won't be out till next year. So he's going to be on Amazon for at least until the end of next year, I would say. So it's a lose-lose for Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, that serves them right for leaving things behind the bins when it's raining. Um, Just to what, a bit another shout-out for listeners, the benefit of the listeners. Uh, thanks again to, uh, to Lotus for hosting this evening, demonstrating new products, having a warm building, that sort of thing. Oh, and refreshments as well. So thanks to Lotus. Uh, I've got a... I've actually got a flyer about how to check your testicles. Uh, I didn't... I didn't bring it. It's what? from a chap called Simon. Simon Smythe? Who's Simon? Simon, thanks. It's on the shelf. I just finished it from back there. Oh, did you? Oh, oh so it's a Lotus. Is it an official Lotus document? Oh, it is, it is. It? It's on the ball, testicular cancer charity. Oh, wow. okay. So it's not a Lotus document. Um, my, no. so my mate Jeff, long-time listener, first-time caller, is your biggest US fan. He's in London on the 1st of June. Can you do an Otlot... For him, please. Well, like at Heathrow or something. Just... <laughs> or in a phone box. I mean, there's only three of us, Let's right? Do it on, so... no. Let's do it on the circle line. Yes. You know, like buskers. Or the Elizabeth line. Have you been on that yet? No. Oh, it's good. Is it? Yeah. What makes it better? It's fast. It's clean. It's like uh, when I've been on it, it uh, which is only like three times now, it's like it, uh, no one has gone out for just one on a Wednesday night and then been sick on it. Okay. Yet. Obviously, they will oh, soon time because will. it's Ta- London and, you know, that happens a lot. Um, we are... Well, we, we might we do one do, in London. We were going to do one in London in June, but I'm not sure it's the first, so I'll keep you posted. It needs to be the first. Okay. <laughs> what? Um, he's, he's only we'll, there for um, a day? He's trapping around you. He's a busy guy. Okay. Is his name Jim? Jim. He's American. So he's doing London in a day. European. You're American. Europe is one country, yeah? Yes. Yes, Europe's yeah, one yeah. country. That's I think true. it's pronounced Europe, actually. Yeah. Oh, so he's not doing London in one day. He's doing London, Stratford, Edinburgh, and Stonehenge in one day. Of course. <laughs> and then on to Paris, Milan, Athens. Oh, hey. That's day two. I've... I've um, the, it's not a Q&A. Are you going to come at me with wooden cutlery? Well... <laughs> As I was over there chatting to some of you lovely audience, um, a chap and his other half who were in the front row had to go. I said, oh. clearly they're bored. Yeah. But, uh, and I understand that. But they, they gave me all of these pieces of cutter in it and what, written on one of them, which is the most dangerous. This feels like a riddle. Yeah. Spoon, knife, fork. 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 Said fork. You'd have someone's eye out with a fork. Yeah. Well, I mean, I what's the name the of the dude with the beard that lives under the sea? Poseidon. Is that Neptune? Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, where do you... <laughs> who's Poseidon? Then? I don't know who is. Pos... Who's Pos... Is he? Oh, okay. Yeah, but is he subaqua? <laughs> okay. So, because I was thinking, there's, there's a Poseidon adventure, right? Which is a thing. Fuck, this um, has gone strange. It's really early. gone off track. Which leads me to this uh, uh, this question from Dave after shave. <laughs> Dave after shave Cully. <laughs> where are you? There you are. Dave, Dave after asks, shave. have you ever had to scrap a podcast because it degenerated into utter bollocks? <laughs> now, Dave, you listen to the podcast. <laughs> One of the things that Johnny and I were very impressed about with the Lotus Emira that we drove earlier was how solid and high quality it felt. And then we actually got to see some of the quality control uh, that they've introduced for that car. And it's really impressive. Yeah. We're the opposite of that. <laughs> We don't run the podcast down a bumpy track to see if it squeaks. Quite the, quite the opposite. No. We, we go, oh, that's a load of old tat. Let's put it out. Um, uh, my barometer of what's good and bad is really quite, quite wrong. 
as well. Yes. Because sometimes I think we've done a good one. I remember I think, oh yeah, we did a good podcast this week. And then I don't normally listen to them back. Richard does that. And, um, and, then, and, and then it'll be like, yeah, actually that was quite a weak one. And then I'll have another day where I think I re-record one and go, I think I was, I mean, I was in a bad mood or I was tired or something. I don't think that was very, very good. And then you'll go, that's probably one of our better ones. I just realised that. So I've got no idea. I did. So we record. I listen back to it and edit it in inverted commas, which means slapping the music on it. Try and take out any sort of like pops and cracks or anything like that that just makes it less pleasant to listen to. And, and then put the music on the end. And then I'll put it on my phone and I go and walk the dog and listen to it again which is, in my head, is my quality control listen, just to make sure it sounds okay through headphones so that people don't write in and go, there's an enormous squall of feedback halfway through that that you <laughs> lazy twats didn't listen to. But I did once say to my wife, she went, are you taking the dog out? I went, yeah, I'll probably do a long walk because I've got to quality control the podcast. And she, she said... didn't say anything, <laughs> which to me was the most insulting thing she could do. If she'd scoffingly gone, what? But she just went and carried on doing something else. And I just thought, she's, I know what she's thinking. That's, she's thinking basically, that's, she's that's done bullshit. that, hasn't yeah, she? Yeah. Um, Dave also asked, have you ever had to edit something out in post? It's usually me reading out a letter from someone that says right at the bottom, for goodness sake, don't read out my name. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I haven't got that far because I'm not that intelligent. So I just read it and then go, oh, shit, it's supposed to be anonymous. You did that. I did. No, you did that one where you read it out and you named the musician that the guy was telling the story about. And at the bottom it said, please don't name the musician because the really I famous, work in the music industry. The really famous musician. And I had to bleep it. And that's when then a man was listening to the podcast in his brand new GR Yaris and he thought the beep was coming from his car. Oh, so he pulled... And he pulled over and called Toyota Assist to find out what was going on. Genuinely. And they sent someone out. Genuinely thought it was a big problem with a brand new car. But it wasn't. It was because I said the name of the guy who... Yeah. Who was the bit of a wrong and... and yeah, anyway, yeah. what's the next question? Uh, is that new I'm, look, I'm wearing my Lotus, I'm wearing, I'm wearing some JPS socks JPS tonight. socks, whereas I've gone yeah. with a simple spout oh. <laughs> Please, everybody, in your own time. <laughs> spout. <laughs> That's brilliant, isn't it? Your shaman-like power over a crowd to do that is Love disturbing. This. Uh, Love it. This is this Nusha? I can't... I, Nusha? 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 Nusha. Hi. Great name. Uh, what spec ID3 is best? Now, this is your department, because I've not oh, driven It's really ID3. confusing the way they spec that car. And it can look ever so cheap mm. if you're not careful. I actually... Are you definitely buying one? Just buy the Seat version, the Cupra version. It's just a significantly or, better car. Can Even I be, though it's the same, it's weird. Can I be bold? Save money and get an MG4. Or... If you're not so fussed about a car that can accurately tell you what its range is, get the new Megane E-Tech, which is lovely in a lot of ways. It's just the computer's a bit dithery. No. Will we get there? <laughs> if we don't, <laughs> it is. we stop, we have some lunch. <laughs> it will be nice. Maybe some, some wine in the centre <laughs> console. <laughs> and then, it's true. Um, Megane is a lovely car, sweet, sweet car. Sweet, sweet it's really, car. It's a good effort from Renault. Yeah, it's weird. looks nice. It's, it's a bit weird to get in a Renault and, and, and look at the dash and go, this is significantly nicer than a Volkswagen. And that's where we're at, I would say. Uh, Anusha has a second question, which is, what does the outside temperature have to be for Johnny to use the air con? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't use the air con. <laughs> I don't no, think no, you no. understand I see it, how it's, perverse it's, this man is. As a, as, air a human, as a human that's been born onto Earth in the area that I live in, it is my duty to be able to cope with all climates that are thrown at me. And if I can't do that, I'm a fucking pussy. <laughs> and that's the way I live. And on that note, I'm going to put some specialist glasses on that a lovely listener called Tim. So I was in the car oh. with someone that needed the air conditioning on. At what? That point. <laughs> <laughs> Just needed so you know, the air conditioning on for Death Valley medical reasons. It was 51 degrees. At well, eight then put the at frigging air conditioning no, on. No. Yeah, it's the evaporation. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of Sarsen's vinegar going on. No. Um, <laughs> Death Valley, interesting. Yeah, it was 51 degrees at eight at night. Oh, so we too got, hot. We, and, and the, I was with the passenger who needed, who had to have the con on. 
And I, I, so I cracked a little window just to, just to warm it through. <laughs> it's just, the poor car was absolutely wheezing. I got out for a wee in the middle of Death Valley, right? I mean, it was desolate. And you know, when you, you know when you come out of a plane, when you go to a hot country and you get that real wall of warmth? This was like, unlike anything I'd ever had. Like Christmas Day, open the, the preheated oven oh, to put yeah. the turkey in. It was like, whoa. It was almost too hot to go to the toilet. I almost well, had stage I fright. You'd sweat it out most it of the liquid out. in your body just because you out. couldn't have the frigging air conditioning. It on. fell out of everywhere apart from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it felt. Not really. Okay. Um, Daniel Moore asks if you were to identify yourself as a trim level from the 70s, 80s, or 90s, what trim level would it be? Oh, shit. That's a really good question. Well, no, because I presume, uh, Daniel, where are you, Daniel? Hello. Um, good question. You're talking about, because I think it was in the 90s that everything started to become like expression, esplanade, <laughs> light oties. And you just went, I don't understand the hierarchy. Because I was going to say about the ID3, it's like there's what, pro? There's life and, and life. Life hack. And pro life, which <laughs> something else entirely. And I can't remember the other ones. Is there one called business? Buzznos. Buzznos. <laughs> Buzznos. Buzznos on trust. I, I think... I had, the problem with it is I remember reviewing the ID and I had to just keep re-reading the press release. It was so bewildering. I was like, I'm supposed to know my way around this stuff and I just... I'm lost. What about a customer who just wants to quickly make a decision and, like, it's... You feel like you've got to read a Harry Potter book to work out whether you need... Do I get the heated seats for that? Do I get the shitty wheel trims? Come on, tell me where I'm at with this. Yeah. But, but from what I, I've, I've learned, Volkswagen don't really want to sell them. So No, clearly not. So just so maybe, maybe, don't, maybe don't buy riddles. it. Maybe, maybe don't buy it. My first is in Bath, but not in Crow. What the fuck? <laughs> Am I getting my <laughs> car this year or oh, not? It's a riddle. A, yeah. car, a car riddle. Yeah. Um, I was never... But I like... Because I like the simplicity of... I mean, we're sort of talking like... LG, LG, LS would be your classic. And then maybe at the top, above that, CD or SX. Or oh, something. yes. Yes. CD. But I'm not going to be so, so conceited as to say that either of us would be a CD or an SX. I mean, I don't have velour seats, that's for sure. <laughs> what about I'm not L- sure I have electric front windows, to be perfectly honest. LX. LX. Between what you think you would like to be, perhaps Oh, yeah. So I mean, what, what delusional spec? Yeah, I'll yeah. go with that. So... <laughs> So I think I'm a CDI, I'm actually an LX. I'm a Splash Special Edition. <laughs> splash! <laughs> so, yeah, are we, are we finished identifying? Do you want to pull one out? Because I, I keep... Yeah, I reckon, I, I, I reckon I'm delusional spec. So I think I'm a CDI, I'm probably an LX. I, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, don't it depends know. also. Do you mean sort of generally or like as uh, professionally, personally, as a lover? <laughs> In which case, City or Popular Plus. Are but Popular Plus implies that you're, yeah, that you're the... Yeah. But it also, you should know there's a lot of ones that are better. Yeah. So on the one also hand, people like you. On the other hand, you're not the best guy around. Yeah. But it's a bit good, sad, isn't it? Dependable and good value, because there's less to go wrong. Yes. So, Alf Bennett. Question. Most interesting demise of a car on test on either of the Gear TV shows? Part two, Name and Shame the Driver. Most interesting demise of a car on test on either of the gears. Well, Tiff, who I've had two missed calls from today, he he was quite good at ruining cars. Yeah. Uh, I, did I tell you about the Aston Martin story? He went to do a road trip on fifth gear with an Aston, and I can't remember what model. It might have been when the Vanquish came out. And it was abroad, so he was supposed to meet everybody at Port, in Portsmouth or Southampton they were going to get the ferry across and then do some, some sort of vineyard spec road trip I don't actually know what it entailed I can't even remember, it was ages ago anyway, got to the port and as he was as he was going onto the ferry it just shat its power steering completely Oh, all fluid, everything dead Tiff being the eternal optimist he not only phoned Aston who went well, you're going to have to just bring it back. We can't do anything about it. Went, no, I haven't got time for that. We're going, we're going to Portugal anyway. <laughs> just and run alongside. He, he drove it to Portugal with the heaviest oh steering. Oh, my God. And even managed to do, like, drifting. If you've ever driven a car with failed power steering, yeah. it's a two-hander. Yeah. It's a two-hander everywhere. He managed to 
He managed to drive that car in a spirited and relaxed manner on camera. <laughs> with no power steering. No power steering. It really is the good <laughs> You've watched the neck muscles. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wonderful car. Look at the view. Yeah, so he, he did ruin that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, he, he, he reversed a reversed a skyline into a skip once. <laughs> I don't know if I should say that. It was, it was at Millbrook Proving Ground, and I think it was, um, might have been winter, so really, really light, dark mornings and early dark evenings. Mm. And someone had parked all the test cars we were doing that day around the back where there was just loads of stuff. And Tiff just got in this, this was an R35 GTR. He just got in it and put it in reverse and someone had put a skip there, allegedly. Or, yeah. And I was like, what do you mean just put a skip there? Surely it was there before. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, just backed it straight into a skip. Not really fast, but enough for us to not really film the back of the, yeah. the GTR <laughs> for 24 hours after. There's, yeah, there's a bit of that. Uh, just, that just reminded me of this. Uh, well, there was a director on... Top Gear, who definitely did that with a Golf GTI and a skip in an otherwise large and open area. Yes. I think he did the full jumping into the driver's seat going, let's go, boom, bang. Oh, awful. awful. Straight into it. But then we had a, a member of staff on Top Gear who was on, we did a race across Japan when the Nissan GTR came out, the current one, against the bullet train. When you say the current one, the one that's been out for sort of the 65 one, yeah, so years. So this was in the 70s we filmed yes, that. Yes, right, yeah, it's good to, um, just so we know. And... We got early access to that car, so we borrowed... Uh, what's the guy called? Mr. GTR, I can't remember his name now. Smokey Nagata. No, no, it's not. That's Midnight The Club head guy. of the GTR Top project, a man who devoted years of his life to that car. I've interviewed him and as he, well, that's yeah, bad, isn't it? I can't. Anyway, he had lent us his personal GTR, his baby, one of the first ones off the line. He'd been waiting years to see the fruition of his project. He agreed to lend it to Top Gear because he knew that you know, it was quite a big share around the world. Yeah. And it was delivered to this car park in Tokyo, maybe, and our researcher arrived in a crew car and immediately backed it into the GTR. Oh, shit. Scuffing it. But our researcher had lived in Japan and knew the great dishonour he had brought upon himself, and so he did the right thing, and he wrote to Mr. GTR and apologised. In Japanese, I think. What? Yeah. I'm not sure his Japanese was that good, so he might have said all sorts of things. <laughs> I am sorry for bumming your chicken. <laughs> it's also an extremely dishonourable thing to do in Japan. <laughs> uh, but the same just take guy, my word for it. The same researcher, they were doing one of those Top Gear sell-through DVDs down at the Ascari racetrack in southern Spain. And this guy was driving a van of props and stuff with a tracking car towed behind it across Europe. He drove all the way from London down to southern Spain on his own because he had a row with the guy who was in the van with him and they refused to speak, so they never did driver changes. What? So he was incredibly tired by the time he got down to the extremely luxurious hotel that's on site at the Ascari track and resort in which they managed to get a great rate to stay in. I think it's got like a Michelin-starred chef or something. And he arrived, I almost said his name then. He arrived, pulled into the car park in the van, and drove it straight into the chef's car. No! <laughs> and the man running that sheet was so embarrassed they didn't eat in the Michelin starred restaurant because they were so worried about the chef gossing in their food. Oh. <laughs> I can't compete with any of these stories. I mean, my, my, my personal incidents are quite well documented on the podcast. You, the the you did the rail slide in the Mondeo. I've done the rail slide in the Mondeo in Sardinia. That was unfortunate. Um, and then, obviously, the Viper. Oh, yes. Which was fairly ruined I so, did a, I've just remembered a, a one which is much lower key but I was doing an Evo story with an M3 Cabrio I don't know why driving it around North London and a man in a transit shouted, did the classic Wah! out of the window at me while I was in the M3 with the roof down which sort of said a lot about that car then we pulled up to do some photos and uh, I uh, outside a building which had a sort of step a very prominent step out oh, of the front yeah. it was a single thing yes. and I somehow scraped the sill of the BMW all up the step and then we only photographed it from the other side for the rest of the day. It's a bit embarrassing. Yeah, that's bad. It's just a rubbish, low-speed accident. I think the only... I've, I, I damaged a hire car once because I... Um, we were doing a magazine shoot. This is the last anecdote. We will go on to the next question. And I, and I parked it right up against a, a sort of vandal-proof park bench that's made of concrete. And then we were filming all day 
can't remember the feature cars, some, some modified cars. And we came back at night, and as the photographer was putting all his gear in the boot and everything, I'd struck the car up and was just sat with there, I don't know, trying to work out where we were going to go to our hotel or something. I was extremely hungry. Mm. And I just, and, and over the end of the bonnet, you couldn't see the vandal proof. Uh, bench it just looked like oh. road so I just got in it and he went in and went right all done let's go and have dinner just put it in first and gave it quite a spirited pull away so I did a point blank range oh. L- a point blank range lunge into a concrete bench in a Corolla and it just it just went <laughs> and it, 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 just, it just sort of swallowed it and then I went ah, oh, and it made this horrific noise and then because once you're in you've got to come back out I had to do the reverse of shame and it went ah, oh, just no. this horrible <laughs> just spat out the bench and then it looked all kind of like it had the mouth of a bottom feeding catfish yes <laughs> so no teeth but just lots of like yeah. have I and it was I... never the same but I did drive it back uh, it didn't leak or anything so I just carried on oh, driving oh well, you're good it. yeah have I told I can't remember if I've told the story on the podcast about two people a journalist and a photographer from a well known magazine not Evo <laughs> <laughs> So by a process of elimination, you can work out that it was Top Gear. But um, they were driving through Tuscany, I guess, in a Lamborghini and a Ferrari. Lovely. On a beautiful route. Tuscan evening. They'd finished all the photography. They just needed to get back to the hotel. It was one of those proper, on days like these moments, they're swooping down these roads. They get to the hotel. They pull in. The journo in, I think, the Lamborghini pulled up. Stuck it in neutral, and then just one last glorious oh, to give it a little blip. The photographer's like, I'll do a bit of that. In the Ferrari, bang, forgets it's a paddle shift and it's still in first, and it shot forward into a low wall, <laughs> and it scuffed up the bumper. Not bad, just not the, the mesh grill in a little bit, scuffed the bumper. So um, they sort of dusted it off, took it back to the factory. Dusted it off. And said that there is a little bit of damage to the front bumper. So sorry. Um, hit a badger <laughs> up in those, in those mountain roads. It's just, no, no, he's okay, he's okay. He's, these things happen, he's okay, it's fine, he's not too bad. Badger? A badger. I know, I'd have, I wouldn't have gone badger. Are they badger. indigenous to the area? Well, I'd, I'd have, have checked, checked this that. first, for sure, because you never know. <laughs> they would have like, it's like someone in England going, I just hit this raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> and you went, a raccoon, you say? Really? Interesting. Yeah, a koala bear ran out, and I was, really? <laughs> sure. Um, they got a call, the magazine got a call from Ferrari a few days later, and went, yes, yeah, he's looking at the car, he'd have bought it. Yes, he's, he's, he's fine, he's fine. Uh, just one question. Uh, this badger you hit, oh, was it carrying some breeze blocks? <laughs> <laughs> really? Busted. Never lie. Um, Never lie. I can't read this person's name. I think it says Jolly Grant. But I don't know... Hmm? Jolly Giant. Oh, Jolly, Jolly Giant. Giant. Is that you? Jolly Giant. Uh, question, scones or scones? I just realised who you are. I know you from the social medias. Scones. Did you used to work here? Yeah, scones, same. cream, or jam first? Well, this like is a West Country question for you, John. Well, I don't, I don't like cream. Oh, well, there we go. I always found it to be disappointing, <laughs> so I used to put that back in the fridge or give it away and just have jam. Controversial. Shit answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's sort of in my air conditioning category of like yeah. you just don't need it. I don't what need I do it. is I put the jam on top and the cream on the bottom, and then you don't have to worry about it. It's fine. Great. It's quite a That's messy done. way of eating it. Okay. Rich from Bishop's Lid. Lydiard? Is it Lydiard? Is someone Somerset. from Bishop's Lydiard here? Liz Lydiard. Lydiard? You, you haven't driven here from Bishop's Lydiard, have you? Shit. Yeah. Shit off. <laughs> what do you mean you're up here? No, he grew up here, he said. Really? <laughs> but you're from Durham. But, but you're from. You're from, <laughs> you're from Bishop's. From Bishop's Lydiard. Respect. But, so you did drive here today? We did. Okay. Thank Lotus engineered car. Oh, in a Lotus engineered car. You Lotus say? engineered car. What was it? Was it a, what do you I want Su- us to guess? Is was it, it like Su- a Mark IV Aster or something? One of their. <laughs> I Suzu Trooper. I'm going to go with. Ooh, handling by Lotus. Yes, handling by Lotus. Handling by, but not Isuzu. Oh. Oh. What, there's lots of shouting out now. It's quite overwhelming. <laughs> People just shouting car names. Swedish. Oh. S- Swedish handling by Lotus Swedish Swedish was it Saab not so Volvo Did they do Saabs I can't remember I mean they probably did they just don't like to talk about it oh Volvo Volvo oh yes you drove all the way oh. here in a Volvo 480 sweet flipping heck <laughs> you you minxes you for some reason <laughs> I once bought a copy of Practical Classics magazine 
Well, you're an interesting person. I bastard. think it had an... <laughs> <laughs> And I think it's because it had an interview with Harris Mann in it, because I am an interesting bastard. You are. And it had a buying guide of the Volvo 480. I don't know if you saw this. It's like eight or ten pages. They devoted quite a lot of real estate to it. And it basically went, they're not that reliable, the parts go wrong, and you can't get replacements for them. But at no point did it say, do not buy this car in big letters. And I thought, that's the take home here. It sounded like a nightmare, so I salute you for keeping one going, because they sound... Um, From Bishop Stadium as well. Yeah. Good, that's a long drive, though. I, I, it's a shame I didn't see you. I was probably looking down at my passenger seat at the time. I've got, I was... my dad, I've got my dad's put a post-it on a, a, um, a two-door Discovery 1. No, it's green. Anyway, we'll talk afterwards. Oh, we'll talk afterwards. That's Steve's car. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, so this one's from Duncan, who's happy for it to have his name read out. Uh, would, would, you, would, you, would you say your dream job is the Boots cosmetic counter with easy access to many aftershaves? Where, where's Duncan? I've never worked at a cosmetic counter. I don't think I'd be trusted. Um, I'd probably get a headache. But yeah. access to lots of potions. I think you have to paint yourself orange before you're allowed to work in Boots Cosmetic Department, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't read I out. Used to, when, I, when I used to do like weekend jobs when I was a student, I would always focus on, and it's bad uh, now that I'm saying it, I would always focus on what's the least amount of public interaction that I can get away with for the maximum money. So I'd always, when I get the interview, I'd go, right, so do you want me to work front of house or do you want me to work back there? And I quickly go, okay, I'll work back there. I might earn a little bit less, but mm. I don't have to talk to anyone so I can turn up hungover yeah. on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Brilliant. Ten hours back there, nobody's mm -hmm. going to bother me. Yeah. Sweet. Done. So, so probably I wouldn't do that because it's too customer-facing. Do the stockroom. That's what I did at Next. Did you do the yeah, stockroom? Yeah, I do the stockroom as much as possible. Brilliant. Because A, you didn't have to wear a suit. And B, you didn't have to talk to people. I once Unless did a stock to. take once in Safeway cafeteria, but what I did is I went into the stock room, locked myself in, mm. and I ate um, four <laughs> dime bars. <laughs> <laughs> I was hung over. Uh, anyway. I did that next, but I ate four t-shirts and a pair of socks. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. Weird. Yeah, so we didn't... Uh, uh, Rich from um, Somerset ask, do you or any of your journalist friends have a regular pair of driving shoes? I get ribbed by my friends when mine come out once a year for our, re our wet road trip. Wet road trip? Wet road trip. Wales. Oh, I see, well, no, right, Wales wet. No, months. wet, yeah, wet yeah, was yeah. better. Let's yeah. go for a wet road yeah. trip. Well, it's sort of the same thing, actually. Uh, I don't have any... Well, I've got like, racing... You don't have driving booties. I've got racing... I've got they make you walk weird. Yeah. Don't they? Weirdly. Sort of... They're not because they're, they're, they're good, source. especially if you've got big feet. Because some cars have got a tight pedal box, and um, <laughs> I find if you've got a sharp edge on your, oh, I'm being boring. Anyway, <laughs> the, you know, the, this one's from Robert Miles. Uh, yeah, the children. <laughs> um, he what's that? What's that? Mm, Robert McCook McCuga. McCohen. McCohen. Sorry, Robert. I, right, I, I left my glasses at home. Oh, okay. Sorry, I've got a pair of glasses here if you want a pair. Then. Um, the, uh, Don't follow Robert home. He can't see the speedometer. <laughs> He'll be doing 120 through villages. What's that? I crashed my first car whilst trying to snap a Yorkie bar. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I tried to snap a York Yorkie bar of chocolate while my friend held the steering wheel. <laughs> Have you, have you had any food-related car incidents? This is the best one. This is the best question we've ever had. It's quite a substantial bar in York, as you now know. How bad was the crash? Um, full front of the stone wall. Oh, oh, shit. But hang on, this is surely the fault of the friend who was holding the steering wheel. Yes, yes. He, he, was, he was learning to drive at the time. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Very much was learning to drive. Uh, how badly did you want that Yorkie? Well, the, the garage, Paul Wimpey's garage back in the day, it used to be just a, a little eight by ten box in the middle of summer. So anything that was that could melt just went in the freezer. So I actually did all the chocolate. So I paid my two pound fifty petrol, bought a Yorkie bar with the remainder of my money. <coughs> And then couldn't break it because it was frozen. Because it was like a brick. Mm. It was a brick. So I was, I was bending it on the steering wheel, gave up, asked him to hold it. So 
<laughs> Bloody hell. Can anybody better that? Have anybody got any food, car accident related uh, stories? I'm trying to think if I've. I don't think I've had an accident. No. I've had a couple of like near situations. Not the worst thing food. you can do, in fact, is you know when you, you're on the road and you need a quick dinner or a quick lunch and you go to the road, you know, the service stations, things, and you get a sandwich or it's got to be handheld material. Yeah. I like a salad. It's a very difficult thing to eat whilst driving. I, and I remember once, desperate times, different times. I, uh, I, I, That's never a good thing I to forgot, say in a story. I forgot, to, I forgot to pick up some cutlery. So I had this really quite sloppy, complicated salad. I was really hungry and I was eating it with a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> like I said I was going through a low point and uh, I needed the food in me there was, there was no other way I tried to sort of funnel it in it wasn't working too complicated so I just reached for the card and just tried to flick it in it's just, it was a really bad idea so I'm quite paranoid now I keep this is a little bit partridge I actually keep a spare set of, of, of and I'm going to take these uh, keep those in the glove box of every car I'm in, just in case you never know. In case you want to get spoons, of every knife, car or you're ever in. Yeah. So, like, what the car I've brought tonight, there'll be some in there. For example, this is a blank one. What? <laughs> totally blank. <laughs> yes, well, that's fine. <laughs> Welcome respite for the audience. Bruce. Oh, Fielding. Bruce Fielding. Not a question. Okay. <laughs> but but talking G wagon and. Alcoholism? Did you? Is that say alcohol? Yeah. Okay, G wagon and alcoholism cars. I. Uh, yeah, well, sorry, take... yeah, please. Um, I launched the G wagon in the UK. Back in, back in... 79, 80. Yeah, 80. Oh, wow. And, um, oh, yeah, in the. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I got one stuck on a rock, a prototype, and I rocked it back when I thought it wouldn't come off. But on the, on the production line, they had these bottle holders for um, bottles of beer. So they were actually building the car while they were drunk. The G-Wagon oh. was being built by drunk Germans. Yeah. Oh, drunk Austrians, I think. And you were, you were involved in the original launch of the G? Yeah. Wow. wow. And the reason it looks like that is because they figured that the army would just have blank flat sheets of steel. And that's why it's all like flat surfaces, because it's easy just to replace a flat sheet of steel. Bloody hell. Ah. Did... Do you know whether the one that you beached on a rock is still alive today? Still there. Still there Have you, presumably, if you, <laughs> if you, you like, just left it there. So just, just doing that still. It's if like you, wor- you worked in the advertising of it. Yeah. So do you have original press material yeah. in your loft somewhere? Or? I have ads. That's mega. That's brilliant. I That's love very the, cool. Yeah, I love, the, I love the early Gs. I've got a, um, a 350 SL stuck on a beach when the... No. You're a liability when it comes to <laughs> <We're> Mercedes. <laughs> Mercedes product. Yeah. Like, and then hey. I got an S class stuck on a level crossing. And <laughs> when the 190 came out, I got one of those stuck in a phone box. Because <laughs> it was small, you see. I thought small Mercedes. <laughs> what? Can you come up here, put this fucking microphone on, and talk to the people? You win the DJ Khaled CD. I was going to do an official. <laughs> Sorry, you win the DJ. <laughs> well, Seriously, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, we were shooting it, so we basically had to do the shoot from rear three quarters because the front three quarters was better. Was just torn off. So we're not the only people in the that's world that suffer that Mazda. That's me with that Mazda with no door handles. Mazda uh, Mazda six in yellow. Um, yeah. Well, we're into fertile... Desperate times, though, right? Oh, yeah. You've got to film it. You can, you've only got one angle you're allowed to film it from. Clever. Very clever. Well, we've, we've clearly struck a rich scene of we audience have. anecdotes because Damien Moran wants to know how far we've ever reversed a car. He says, I reversed a 735i BMW for 10 miles. 10? <laughs> due, due to a faulty gearbox. <laughs> 10 miles? 10 miles? Before we had a trailer, no. And it was after the crash, 
It, Hang on, well, it well, after you crashed. It, it, it was after the crash of the tank. No forward gears, and we couldn't tow on the road with the bottom line. So mm. I traversed it from the bottom of the place, through town, and I couldn't get it. Was this in the daytime? Six miles an hour in reverse. It does what, 26 miles an hour in reverse? Well, yeah. That's fast, wow. though. That's fast. It doesn't sound fast, but it's fast. Yeah. It's a 7 Series BMW. Yeah. Oh, so you predate the James Bond era, the Piers Brosnan 7 Series stunt yeah. thing. Yeah. You were doing it way before him. Yeah. But was I'm, this in the daytime? Were people looking at you? There's a guy just reversing. Well, so you're in traffic. Everyone else is going forwards, like <laughs> squares, and there's you. We used to do it on airfields a bit when we were filming for Fifth Gear, and we, if, we, if we had a lot of test cars about and there was a, a lull in the day, usually just after lunch when camera equipment was being reset and stuff, sometimes some of us <laughs> might have gone, oh, what how fast, what how fast a Ford Fiesta goes in reverse? And you just VMAX it in reverse. And it would just, you know, it hit VMAX and you mm. go, it doesn't feel too fast. And then you put a tiny bit, then you put a tiny bit of lock onto it and it gets this horrible death wobble on. <laughs> And you think, we're going over. We're going over. Yeah. It's, going to, it, it's going to just pitch at any moment. It's horrible. Is that where you suddenly, you suddenly go, should I accelerate or lift off? Which is the right one to do? Exactly. Panic. Yeah, Panic. That's, that's step one. I but also, say. I know uh, they overheat when you reverse them in excess of three miles, I would say. It didn't. Very good. <laughs> that's a really good reverse for 10 miles. <laughs> Ten miles. <laughs> you know, what about traffic lights? Were you having to just check the mirrors for traffic oh, lights? Yeah. <laughs> okay, just few. amazing. Just roundabouts. They're well, easy in a reversing car. So. I think I've, I've said it on a cast before about my dad's Volvo T5 that reverse failed on. And instead of being logical and going and getting it mended, dad was like, oh, I reckon I can nurse this through for a while. And spent the next two or three months just driving strategically <laughs> and parking strategically until one t- a year right you two bastards need to get here and we'll go and sit in the audience you can have the damn jackets fill your boots um, wow uh, here's one for you from uh, uh, Jamie Fretwell we know Jamie hello Jamie yeah, hello he, he says Richard has written many books and had varying degrees of success yes this is true varying very much varying but, degrees Johnny of would you consider writing a tome and if so what would it focus on piss fisters of the UK <laughs> question mark a piss fister is a special thing I think that's a more of a photographic book <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's something I've considered doing I'll, I'll stick to Instagram for now <laughs> but the I don't think I've got a book in me because I don't think I've got the, any more the attention span to sit and write it. You'd have to pretty much lock me in a cupboard or Jim Radcliffe would have to threaten to buy me or something. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like the idea of writing a book, but I think the reality is I just don't know. I don't really know what I'd write about. I need to do more things, like reversing BMWs for 10 miles. Well, that, and, I mean... That would. I'm sorry. I was just going to lead into the next question, but what? Because what about a book where you? Do you remember that Tony Hawk book, which was round Ireland with a fridge, and he travelled round yes. Ireland, but he was carrying a fridge. That's right. <laughs> but if you reversing everywhere by Johnny Smith, <laughs> where you spend a year touring Britain, a bit like Bill Bryson or something, but you only reverse everywhere. I could quite like that. I probably have chiropractic issues, but I could do it. <laughs> Unless I had a swivel seat adapted, oh, that with feels a, like cheating. And you use cru- can you use cruise control in reverse? We'll go to our expert. <laughs> <laughs> kind you know of disappointed what? you didn't try it. If, if I'm anybody honest, tries but... to set Cruz in reverse, shit, I'm going to do well, that. Well, I'm going to try that, yeah. <laughs> or tonight. Or tonight. We've got a whole test track out there. We've got a test I'm sure track Lotus won't mind. Lotus, I've got my eyes on you. <laughs> yeah, in reverse, press set. How did yeah. the tyre wall get damaged? Well, you know those pricks off that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an infinity in that tower? Well, no, it's a genesis, apparently. <laughs> um, <laughs> fat ninja asks... <laughs> Don't be harsh on yourself. Um, Johnny often talks about you both going off on some adventure. If you were to do so, where would you go and what would you drive? Brackets, my bet is on the Paris-Dakar in a shonky short MOT Matra Rancho. 
<laughs> well, you have answered your own question there, sir. I, I talk about going on adventures with Richard quite a lot. I think the reality is, and I've, I'm getting the hint now, I don't think he does want to do it. Because I ask a lot, and I feel like it's a one-sided relationship. Hey, let's go away for the weekend. Yeah. No, but I have to sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my, sorry my fairness, wife's calling me. You, it's just Sir Jim Radcliffe. He wants to buy our road trips. Okay. And, <laughs> but and he wants to holidays. come on them as well. He mm-hmm. wants to come. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, it's he wants to fun. stop everywhere and just buy shit, though. The no, car but every, will be full of football teams. Every Airbnb that we book into, he goes, quite like yeah, this. I love this. Right, right. <laughs> How much for this? How much for this? Yeah. Um, I, the, the, I, I just feel like I have to manage expectations because every time I send you a sort of interesting second-hand car, you go, should we buy it? Yes, it's true. And then go, should we drive it to Addis Ababa for some reason or other? And I have to just go, I'm kind of busy this weekend, yeah. so no. It's usually I find an old folds in, um, in Belgium. They always seem to be in Belgium. Mm. Folds. Let's try this again. <laughs> uh, it's like those self-help tapes. Um, <laughs> Hello, sir. I'd like to have my folds serviced, please. <laughs> Repeat after me. I was in the area in my folds. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, tasty old... Fo- well, the kind of tasty old folks that get you excited, like two-door Granadas and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I like Always the ones in Belgium. that... Yeah, I don't want any Cosworth RS stuff. I like all the beigey uh, nonsense. But then you do go, should we buy a near MOT failure Citroen C15 van and drive to Belgium to get that Granada? Yes. And I'm like, when? Oh, tomorrow? No. If, if <laughs> Got the gas man coming. If channels like Dave had any sort of common sense, they yeah. would commission that shit. <laughs> But we could go come back with a bootload of foreign uh, lady attraction lotion. <laughs> well, you know, it's not guaranteed. I, I don't I, know. Attraction anyway. is, a, is a fluid uh, thing. Tom asks, uh, were there any toy cars from your childhoods that have shaped your taste in cars? I know Tamiya make a Baja Beetle. Johnny's influence, perhaps. 100%. Who, 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 uh, who's Tom? The, Tom. It's 100% true. I've still got most of them. So the, the, sound, the Tamiya Sands Scorcher, I remember seeing it in the window of a toy shop and then I went in and got the brochure, the Tamiya brochure at the time and was just absolutely blown away by it. Just thought it was the most exciting thing. Realistic suspension. Wow. But on a much more affordable level, I remember going... Our local post office, which my mum used to go all the time to buy... Stamps and shit. Yeah. Um, there was like a glass topped counter, and they used to sell all kinds of matchbox toys. And there was one car in there which I, I couldn't stop looking at. And it was a, uh, in fact, there were two. One was a Fiat X19, which looked so Ooh. futuristic. And I'd never even seen a real Fiat X19. Mm. I think they rotted away before they got to Somerset. And then, um, then there was a 57 Chevy um, custom car. So it was black with realistic flames up the bonnet and it had a drop forward bonnet and it had a real chrome engine. And I remember, you know, it was obviously this big, just going, that's the coolest thing. So I saved up my pocket money for about three weeks and bought it and I've still got it. And I used to polish it with pledge. <laughs> I'm that guy. <clears throat> my mum recently pulled out all my old toy cars. My little boy who's 18 months now was playing with them. I completely forgot about them. And it explained my taste in cars because there was two Volvo estates. Yeah. And it's the 190E that I've been lusting after since I was probably about that age. I completely forgot about them. I saw them. Brilliant. It explained so much. It's so true. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't talk to him about old Mercedes because he's probably... <laughs> yeah. I, he, he drove into a substation in a 190 and caused ca- <laughs> catastrophic damage. Uh, and we just don't talk about it, especially 21 in Stuttgart. But, um, <laughs> the strangest thing, I was in the restaurant and they said, Sir, could you get out of your SLC first, please? <laughs> Bit quaint. It's so true, though. I think that's why I like... We, we both share a, a common interest in fairly rubbish cars. Yeah, I was going to say, because have... I've noticed this with my boy, that he has lots of uh, Hot Wheels cars, you know, and I think he is drawn to like the McLarens and Lamborghinis and things like that and I've still got a box of my old toy cars somewhere in the loft and uh, it includes a Triumph Acclaim <laughs> which did they actually bother to make a toy it had it? steering did anyone else have this you push the door mirrors yes I'm not making this up Acclaim yeah and it steered and I think they used the same colour on the not dissimilar looking Mark 1 Honda Prelude Corgi model 
Oh, did you have that? Richard. I did. I I that. You can come you. to my house and play with it if yeah, you want. You, I mean, <laughs> you two are... Real to play. Really? You? Did, yeah. did you have to push the door mirrors to make it steer? <laughs> Immaculate taste in cars. It wasn't the slogan for the BX, loves driving, hates garages. Yeah. Was it? I heard a yep. Yeah. Did Good. you do the it's campaign amazing. For it's like having a fact-checking committee in the room. I love that. <laughs> Start doing random stuff. Did this you is the best Q&A session speak? we've ever had. No, that's not true. No. But they do like antifreeze. Cats? Yeah, but, you mustn't give it, yeah, but it kills them. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They're really addicted to the smell. Oh. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, 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 because... Well, uh, I no, I haven't, but... <laughs> but not, that a bit too quickly, I nasty people, Nasty people that don't like cats have been caught feeding oh. cats antifreeze. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, it's not, it's not a question. It's just something yeah. we knew. You can't um, start better in winter. Paul Titchmarsh. Marsh. Uh, who is winning Rally Sweden this weekend? Oh. I thought you were going to talk about a, a rally jacket or a fictitious... Uh, status um, job. Who is winning it this weekend? And any more, WC- oh, and any more WRC first? driver jobs oh. thought of? Somebody sent a really good WRC driver. Oh, yeah, driver. Someone, I was, there was one where I went, that's just exceptional. It was up there with Gwyndath Evans. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone on Instagram DM'd me one and it had me howling for ages. <laughs> what, sorry? Nicky no, Grits. Nicky Grits. It was. What, it he, the famous K driver who serves that weird American stuff you get with breakfast. No, he's very busy at this time of year. Oh, he's doing the roads. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. it was a... Because he can't bear loss of traction. No. So he goes out there all well, hours. He, you know, it's scary when oh, that Nicky, happens. Oh, Nicky Grits. Driving. Yeah. Yeah, Nicky's yeah, grits. yeah. Um, Andy Hicks asks... Somebody's written this you... on a receipt. <laughs> no, it's good, though, isn't it? <laughs> Improvisation. Uh, Andy Hicks says, what would you rather own, a Rover Street Rise with a failing head gasket or a first-gen Ford EcoSport, EcoSport, with small alloys? I, I go. Streetwise every Street time. Streetwise every time. I'll yes. take my chances. Streetwise every time. Uh, sorry, guys, this is a car question. Uh, Haven't you heard this podcast? <laughs> if you drive an Ineos Grenadier... Uh, anus gr- grenadine at the correct speed over bumpy ground do you think that the doors will pop open to tell you that it is too uneven to be in a mo- t- <laughs> have you run into the receipt <laughs> 50 is litres of super unleaded too uneven to be an emergency runway too uneven to be I don't understand the question <sighs> it's actually got really good good ride quality the anus gr- grenadine it's surprisingly good it? yeah the steering is an issue but the, yeah. uh, but the, the, the ride is good. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I would say, depends if you option it with the full off-road tyres, the BF Goodrich, AT, what's names? But uh, yeah, ask, ask Jim. Jim will know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Just um, put a sign up saying you've got something for sale and he'll be right around. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially if you write it with, I don't know, a dog or... <laughs> I don't know. Your elbow. <laughs> One of those big mitt things that people use in the shower to exfoliate. A wash mitt, yes, a an exfoliation mitt. Exfoliation mitt. mitt with paint. Yeah. Uh, Tom Alexander, <laughs> this is a good question, a good, uh, a, a good mullet over question. Mullet over. If you could pick one car to be made by any manufacturer, what would it be? Mine would be a Delta Integrale by Gordon Murray, body designed by Zagato. Oh, wow. Ooh. He's, he's gone in high. He has. Hasn't he? I don't know. There's so many options there. Yes. <laughs> We've discussed this quite a few times. Well, I don't... I've actually had a discussion with Singer in a bar where Ashton Kutcher walked in with his then-girlfriend, who I can't remember the name of. It was a weird night and, um, in America. And <laughs> not in Watford. Off of America. <laughs> no. And... I had a few beers and just basically told Robert Singer, he needs to stop fucking around with one Robert leg. Robert Singer? <laughs> yeah, I just went, it's all getting a bit boring and formulaic. Mix it up, mix it up. And I basically said, if I ever become Jim Ratcliffe rich, yeah. I didn't know Jim at the time, just thinking about looping it back in. I said, Matra Rancho, stop fucking about. Oh, yes. I said, take the concept of it and just, and just make it brilliant and make it genuinely four by four and you know, weave the leather in a sexy way. Do it, make it happen. I'd go, hear me out on this. I will. Austin Princess. Sweet. Alpha V6. 
made but, by 1970s Mercedes. So bus over... Oh, hello. <laughs> so, but, so I got a murmur. It did, it did, it did. A few of us... I don't have, know which bit, though. Maybe all so of the bus, bus over V6, rear-wheel drive... Oh, no, because they front-wheel drive, because they... They did, you know, they did do a... Yeah, yeah, like in a, you know, a 164. That would be quite... I mean, it would be extra weird. Sweet, sweet engine. Lovely. But you know it can take a six up front. I mean, I know it's a, a, a straight six in the Princess, but... Yeah. But I just think... Uh, and then sort of lightly resto-modded interior, because I think it's still a very modern design. And, you know, if Mercedes yeah. of the 70s or 80s even built it and got... Or, or made by Lexus. Oh. Get those panel gaps absolutely yeah. crisp. Yeah. And I think it, the car would immediately look better, but then you've got that real wedgy nose down stance. I want the four headlights with the, without the raised grille. Kind of looks Alfrey anyway. Yes. And now I've got an Alfrey engine behind it. <laughs> Molto bene, as they say in Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think I'd be quite happy Do you with know what? No I've just realised, if I was Sir Jim Radcliffe, I'm just going to keep mentioning his name. <laughs> I, <laughs> I would just buy any, any car under £500 and put the best Olin suspension I possibly could on it, just to see, just what, to the see what happens. What would be the difference? And Tim Clifford. Ralph or Rolf is asking, did the chap in the Lotus Eclat make it? Yes. Did he? Did you? And did it's, he? It's not an Eclat. It's an Elite. It's an Elite. And it made it five hours. That's fantastic. Or did another Lotus, an old Lotus turn up? Well, bad news from Tim. <laughs> he, said, he says his Elan Sprint didn't. It suffered a suboptimal sub electrical distribution to the starter motor. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm presuming, Tim, are you, where's Tim? Does I'm that mean it didn't, you, so you, it failed to proceed at home? It was an electrical distribution issue. Okay. So it's still on the drive, it never left the drive? I uh, didn't even make that guarantee. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, bugger. I would have just bump started it. Yeah, just run down the road, hop in it. Oh. oh. So you came in your Alpha engine princess instead. More dependable car, I think. Even before Lexus get their hands on it. <laughs> um, that's, I usually think that. You know those, those um, the cellar access outside pubs? You know, you've got that thing that they drop the barrels down into the cellar. We've got a whole envelope and I, full of uh, questions. Oh, my God. It's got some, uh, some thick... I always thought that those are... I don't like walking on them because they always feel a bit wobbly, like they're going to collapse inwards. And one of the things that's always played on my mind is, that, imagine if you asked Mercedes to engineer these, how much better they would be and how much more relaxing it would be to walk across the top of them. But I imagine they've got bigger fish to fry, so I've never asked. What the f <laughs> farting heck? Someone's given us an envelope with a picture of DJ Khaled in it, and he's shirtless. Do you think he was eating spag bol before he went on stage, and then he went, oh, man, my white shirt? Oh, yeah. I'll just take it off. I'll just take... I mean, there's an enormous amount of questions accompanying DJ Khaled's uh, photograph. Hang on, wait. This is not from DJ Khaled, is it? I don't know. No, he can't write. Because he does go on a bit. Um, well, this, uh, no, it's from Steve Allen. Steve, where are you? There's a shitload of, shitload of questions here. I'll, try, I'll, I'll, t I'll pick two. First off, thank you for the hours of uplifting and Tim. Uh, Steve, thank you for coming. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, enjoy the Bake Take show on YouTube. Yeah, yeah brilliant. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's this? I'll, I'll read this later. Uh, <laughs> question, <laughs> this is bedtime reading, I think. Question one. As an impressionable six-year-old lad whilst up in Norfolk visiting my grandparents, I was actually brought here to Hethel for a day out in 1979 to Lotus's Open Day. Oh, Really? I can vividly remember touring the factory and being in awe, seeing all the garishly but oh-so-cool 70s coloured esprits and eclats being glued together on the production line. Another highlight of the day was my late grandfather being blown away to see and have a quick chat with Mr Chapman himself. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant blown away to see. I was like, oh my... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's got to be at least what? 20 miles well, from never, here? <laughs> never to be seen again. Yeah, after we've no. been to Lotus, we went to Great Yarmouth, and that's it when was, the disaster happened. He was wearing an enormous silky coat. Uh, <laughs> yes, just... he was wearing one of those David Coverdale blues-ons, and it was a breezy day. You know, it's so flat. That, you know. But before he knew it, he was off like a sail. 
Um, however, for me, the best thing was being allowed to sit in the white esprit from Spy Who Loved Me, Bond film, which to this day I still think is the coolest Bond film, Bond car ever, along with the Peugeot 504, Alpha GTV, and the AMC, which did the barrel roll. Yes, I think it was a Hornet. You'll know. Uh, yes, it was. You've probably been asked this many times before. What's your favourite ever Bond car? Oh, and, and part two, you've already heard mine. What's your earliest car-related memory? For you, Richard. Uh, earliest earliest memory. car-related memory. I don't know. I think I have one of those. Do you ever have those things where you, th- you have sort of virtual memory from your childhood, as in it's something your parents told you, which you then sort of think you remember? Because apparently I used to sit in the back. My, mum, my mum's car, when I was very little, was a Mini, but it was an automatic Mini. And when she drove my dad's car, which is a manual, the Avenger, she used to have a little bit of trouble if she hadn't used to get her eye in with the clutch and stick. <laughs> and apparently, now you'll find this very hard to believe, but I was a smart-ass little fucker when I was a child. <laughs> and Kel's apparently... Surprise. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? And apparently I used to sit in the back of the Avenger when my mum was trying to drive it, going, she stole it. <laughs> really? She stalled it again. Hang on, are you, are you a I was going to say, I was, was, was going to turn into Frank Spencer there for some reason. But yeah, so I was a little shit, but I don't actually, I don't really remember You look that. like Sir Alan Sugar. Did you well, talk yeah. like him for some reason? This whole escapade has stalled. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Amsgags. <laughs> There's an extraordinary question here. Talking of long-winded questions, someone's come pre-prepared with a printed wow, question. Wow, this is amazing. This is amazing. Martin L. Is this Martin? Hello, Martin. Well, all right, I'm going to read this out because... You're like, you've got frequent fryer points on these live shows, so. <laughs> this is so stupid. This is going to have to be the last question because we've got to finish. Uh, you're in a high class hotel lobby. The hotel is popular with celebrities. You've enjoyed a star studied evening with cocktails, mini pork pies, and karaoke. Your room's on the 60th floor. You need to take the elevator. The three open at the same time. The doors open. Guests enter. You have a choice of which elevator to take. God, this is complicated. One, bubbly TV chef from the 80s, Rusty Lee, enters the first elevator. (laughs) She's sobbing uncontrollably and carrying her own shoes. Elevator two, Morton Harkett, angel voice star of Aha. He looks incredibly angry and there are remnants of creme brulee on his his lapel. (laughs) You last caught his eye while performing Take On Me during the karaoke. Your rendition was poor. It's a hard song to do, in fairness. Yes. Day, elevator three. Earlier that day, DJ Khaled was presented with a trumpet, famously used by both Louis Armstrong and Roy Castle. Oh, bloody hell. He enters the final elevator, crouches down, and begins to open the trumpet case. You cannot wait for another elevator. You cannot take the stairs. You cannot drown yourself in the lobby fountain. You must take one of the three elevators. Oh, Choose I... wisely. Well, it's, it's not going to be number three, is it? No. Because DJ Khaled would end up with a... A trumpet uh, <laughs> somewhere. A flute with a trumpet. Oh, I was going to say, I'm, I'm definitely 100% going for Morton Harkett. On Absolutely. Because I don't think he could get that angry. Not no. sort of like, you know, he's Gordon Norwegian. Ramsey. They're no, naturally nice people. Quite breathy, quite. Breathy. Uh, you know, even when they're angry, they're probably more chilled out than British yeah. people. So I'm going to go with Harkett. 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 Are we Harkett. all in agreement? What do we think? Harkett for the win? Yeah. Yes, Harkett. Let's take on him. Take him on. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, or I always should, think if it was done in Yorkshire this. action, it'd be tech. Tech. Tech, tech on, on me. Tech on oh, me. Tech me on. Tech you bastard. <laughs> tech on tech me. me on, tech. you bastard. <laughs> it's more to try to start a fight, yeah. but not that committed. He wants to do it in a polite way. Come on, tech me on. Um, tech me on. Right. Well, look, we should stop this. Yeah. For this all is... our sakes. Um, so, before we end got three things to tell you. Uh, they are one. Johnny has a solo YouTube channel. Uh, this time he's contacting the police investigating major crimes and attempting to give them evidence that frames <laughs> presenters from a popular TV food contest. <laughs> it's called the Implicate Bake Off show. Oh. Uh, this week he's trying to put the 1996 Manchester City Centre bombing on Noel Fielding. Oh. So, um, <laughs> good luck with that. Uh, if that's not to your taste because I just made it up, then you could always watch the Late Break Show. Lots of excellent videos about cars and people who love cars on there. Uh, second thing to say is again just a huge thank you to everyone from Lotus who made this possible um, which is uh, Flo, Gav, uh, Charlotte, Jamie, uh, Rob who's not here still yep. um, and all of you for coming. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. I mean we could but it was nice to have you here fact checking. It would have been strange and lonely if you guys hadn't turned yeah, up. It very would have just been so. simply a plinth thank with you. two seats and <laughs> a guy with a DJ Khaled CD. And uh, that would be 
extremely odd. Uh, I want to say thank you to Lisa as well for, oh, yes, for, for sorry. putting up with us and manning slash ladying the merch <laughs> stand. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Uh, but in all seriousness, yeah, thank, thanks for listening to the cast and thanks for uh, supporting the this, this stupid, stupid, stupid. Uh, oral uh, production. <laughs> That we put together. <laughs> you were wondering where that was I going. I was wondering go. where you were going. <laughs> I could see what I eyebrow, a, your so Roger I, Moore eyebrows started going then. Someone asked me quite recently about uh, Terry Wogan, because we had Terry Wogan on Top Gear and said, Was he nice? And I was like, Yeah, he was really nice, actually. He was really nice. But he also did a brilliant thing when they were recording the show where Jeremy went off on some meandering thing. And it was, it was clearly bollocks. And as a professional broadcaster, I think Wogan could see straight away that Clarkson was going off down a dead end lane of shit. <laughs> and he just brilliantly just sort of fixed him with a little narrow-eyed stare and went, where are you going with that? <laughs> <laughs> and for years afterwards, when someone in the office when we were writing the show was sort of suddenly went, well, we should do that. Uh, the, 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 where are you going with that then? <laughs> so you just had a bit of a, where are you going with that then? But you pulled it back, so that's okay. I did pull it back. Uh, yeah. And the third thing I've got to tell you is a little bit on brand for this. The, the phrase simplicate and add lightness is often attributed to Colin Chapman, but in fact, uh, it was used by American inventor William Bushnell Stout, um, who in turn seems to have pinched it from one of his designers, Gordon Hooten. So it's been around for longer than Colin Chapman, but Colin Chapman just... It it's the mantra that I think DJ Khaled should adopt. Uh, what, what it? <laughs> no, that's simplicate and shut up. <laughs> yeah, just add lightness. <laughs> don't, don't say, do, eat anything. <laughs> just stop now, please. Uh, someone wrote to us and said, can you stop picking on DJ Khaled? It's... No. <laughs> <laughs> Yours. He's an easy target. He's a shitload richer than me. He doesn't give a flying toss, but I don't like him. So anyway, well, he's a bit of an air thief. Really. Wait till Jim Radcliffe buys him and then throws him into yeah. the sea like that man's granddad. <laughs> Can we sell DJ Khaled to, to Sir Jim Radcliffe? Sir Jim, make a really quick owner of all things. Yes. Sir Jim, and that's what we call a stitch back. Yes. To the last podcast as well. <laughs> anyway, that's quite enough of that. We're supposed to have rounded the show up. Uh, another 10 not, minutes. We're just talking still. So we're like DJ Khaled, we should shut up. <laughs> but thank you ever so much for listening. Uh, we'll do this all again same time next week. Until then, goodbye. Yep. Good night. <laughs>